What's up, Poker Brandon here. This is session six. Let's get right into the action. This was a very quick one hour session. First cycle of hands, I like to kind of limp in and just see how people play. No, this table limped in a lot. As I could see, this was only my probably third or fourth hand and I had ace king, I limped in. We went five ways to this nine king seven flop. The blinds checked first to act pre-flop bet $6. I don't really know how anybody plays at this table. Neg one to my right made the call for six dollars. I decided to raise this up because I have top top and I think any weaker kings will call plus a nine seven any straight draws would make the call as well. And the OG better and the caller made the call to twenty as well. Now when this ten came, this was a limped pot, so it's very possible somebody had nine. 10, 7, 10, any straight got there, King 10 got there. I just didn't want to put money in, not knowing how these players play, so I checked it, and we went to a River King. On this River King, the action's on first to act, and he takes his time, he leans forward and takes a better look at the King. Not sure why he had to lean forward and look so closely at it. Not sure what to make of it, I don't know the player, I don't know how he plays. But with trip kings and the highest kicker, I feel pretty good about it. He bets $12, which is pretty small, and there's an insta fold. Now, if I wanted to be extremely safe, I would probably just call here. But he put $12 into a $75 pot. So it just doesn't feel like he's trying to get value from a straight or a king. It feels more like he might have a 9 and he or a 10 and he thinks he's good and he's just trying to block it to see the showdown so i go ahead and raise it to 50 to see if i can get a call from obviously a weaker king or a a nine or a ten even pocket pairs like jacks queens but he thinks better of it and he makes a lay down which i'm sure was definitely correct Okay, so second significant hand of the night came about 10 minutes later. It was 5.40 p.m. I had just sat down for about 15 minutes, and I was writing notes in my phone from the previous hand, so I was not recording, but I took a photo of this uh, after the hand played out. Let me break it down for you. So first to act pre-flop opened it up to $18. He was neg four. And he had about $800 on the table. He was the big stack, and it folded all the way around to me. I was on the straddle for $6. So I had a discount, and with my suited 7-8, it was pretty easy to make the call. I made the call. We went 1v1 to a flop. The flop came queen 8-8 eight, eight, rainbow. Super lucky to hit 3 eights against a player 1v1 who most likely was pretty strong. I checked it to him after about five seconds of staring at the flop, and he goes ahead and c-bets for $35. So after he c-bets for $35, at this point, I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to double up off of his stack. Now, what hands could he have had? He could have had ace, queen, king, queen, aces, kings, and it's possible that he was taking a stab at it with air like ace jack, ace king, uh, lower pocket pairs. But I knew the best way to get his money was, gonna, was going to be fast playing my hand from this point forward. I just need to make this first raise look like a bluff. And I figured about 3x right now. A 3x raise against his $35 C bet would look right about right. It doesn't really quite look like I want the call. It doesn't really quite look like I want the fold. It's, it's right about the sweet spot to get him to basically shove on me. If he has a queen, probably just shove it. Any overpair, just shove it. And if he has a bluff, 
possibly go ahead and shove it to just push me out because he thinks that I'm bluffing. Reason I did this with this player specifically was because this player watches my vlogs. He might be watching now. What's up, man? If you're watching this, um, and I knew he watched lots of my bluffs, live tables and on YouTube. So anyway, I go ahead and raise to $105. It was about 3x and I had $230 behind. Now, after I raised him, it didn't really take him long to re-pop me. And he re-raised it up to $210. Once he made it $210, I knew our stacks were going to go in. Uh, I just do not think he was going to fold for uh, $125 more after I shove. So I went ahead and shoved it all in on the flop. $335 was the total amount I had shoved into the pot. It was only $125 more for him to call. And he went ahead and made the call. I uh, pretty much expected that. Turn came a five and river came a five. So I had a full house by the river. I turned over my seven, eight suited. And he showed pocket sixes. So this player definitely thought I was making a move. I know he's seen me make moves on boards like these with smaller pocket pairs like fives, fours, threes, twos, maybe even like air. So I did take advantage of that information and I got paid the max against my opponent at this point and I was really happy to know that I was able to exploit that information and get paid so let's move on to hand number three okay so third significant hand of the night came at 5 56 p.m my stack is about 650 dollars there's two limps over to me and i see ace queen off suit i'm sitting neg three nobody seems to be opening up pots here and if they do it's always like aces kings queens Pens, so I open this up with ace queen offsuit, and both limpers make the call. I recheck to see what suits I have, and we go three ways to this flop. Flop is five seven eight. Now, this is still early on in my session, so after one check. And after one more check to me, yeah, I could continue on this. But it's still early on in the session, and I don't want to go too crazy betting with ace-queen and then possibly getting re-raised and having to fold when I could see a free card. So I go ahead and take the free card. Next card is a nine of spades. When I see this nine of spades, definitely uh, not a good card for me. I only have two overs and all it takes is one six to be in one of these players hands for them to have a straight and first to act pre-flop makes the check these guys both limped in pre-flop so they could really have a lot of sixes in their hands and their range so i just check it and i was pretty much ready to give up at that point but i hit an ace so now i'm kind of curious here I have a pretty good showdown hand. I don't expect anyone here to have ace king because ace king probably would have uh, repopped it pre flop or opened up pre flop. So there's a check to the neg two seat. And as I'm thinking here, I'm wondering that there is a possibility that somebody could have ace five, even like ace seven, eight, nine. I don't know if these players like to slow play or if they're super, super careful and they wouldn't bet on the turn holding a hand like 7-9 or 5-8 or 8-9. So it's definitely sort of a tricky spot, but I bet 30 because um, I figure I could still get value from any weaker aces here and uh, possibly a hand like a pair of nines, like 9-10. 
Nine jack. I believe you're good. But it's just weird if they didn't bet that for value on a turn. But like I said, I don't know how these players play, so it's sort of also an info bet. Yeah. And first tag preflop made the call, and he showed ace jack. So he's kind of a careful player, kind of. And he's not too crazy. So fourth significant hand of the night, I look down at a queen, I'm on the button, and I notice that everyone at this table is just folding. Everyone's folding, 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 chopping, 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 and if they do open it up, they're opening it up to about $25 to $30, pretty much screaming out that they're holding aces, kings, queens, jacks, ace, king. And I bump this up to $10 and I show them after they fold because I want them to know that I will open up to $10 with stupid hands. I will also do that with aces, kings, ace, king, ace, queen. So I just want to set the information that I don't play premium hands only. I want the table to start playing some more, calling some more, because that's how you make money. The trick is not playing stupid after the flop if you hold a stupid hand. <clears throat> anyway, last significant hand of the night. It's about 6.15 p.m. It's only been about 45 minutes to an hour since I sat down. And I have ace, eight of hearts. Here we go with a bunch of limps over to me. I'm on the straddle. Now, because the players are still tight, I go ahead and raise this up to $15. This was a very small open compared to seeing four people limp in but I didn't necessarily want to make it too big here in case I got repopped by this small stack to my left who was a new player he actually ends up ISO raising me minimum Look. so we end Look. up going two Look. ways to a flop flop came eight five queen with two hearts so now this is a great flop. I have one over, I have the nut flush draw, and I have a pair already, so I have plenty of outs if I'm up against a queen. He announces all in. Go ahead and watch the action. Okay, so you can see that he was asking for no more red, but what ended up coming was another eight and another five. So it didn't work out in his favor. He did show me a queen, so he was ahead there. Not sure how many outs he had. I wasn't sure if he had a heart or not. But I ended up hitting an eight, and that was good enough for him to muck his hand. So I ended up picking up a $171 pot. So my stack ended up from $300 to about $850, and it was about one hour of play. And on a weekday night, I was happy to just take this $500 and walk out. So I ended up leaving plus five hundred and fifty dollars i racked up all my chips you might see some of my rebuy chips in there but the total profit was 550 bucks not bad for one hour of play and thank you for watching this is poker brandon i'm out